Okay, there we go. I forgot to turn the, uh... okay, now we're recording there. Okay, good morning, Scott, are you with us? I am, and God bless you guys. I, I didn't know that this would happen. I decided to take the Memorial Day home with my family, and you guys uh, said we can do it, and God bless you. Thank you for, again, flipping the tables, and this is beautiful. Well, I just love how God works, and, uh, you know, and it's just given me the courage. You know, uh, the Bible always, you know, everywhere there was an encounter uh, in the Old Testament, and, of course, when the angel appeared to Mary, you know, what was the first thing that they always said is, uh, do not fear, and uh, I have to admit that sometimes it's kind of fearful being here, but you helped me guide it through this morning, and Colleen is here, so, and the Holy Spirit is always with me, even when I'm here by myself. So, you know, we're never alone. So, you know, the, the word says where two or more are gathered, you know, he is right in the midst. And so even when you're by yourself, you still got the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. That's for you right there. You bet. <laughs> and in fact, Ernie, as you were talking about how grateful we are for all of the men and women who have served in the military, I heard the most delightful story. And there was a teacher um, in this high school and when the students came into the class the first period class there were no there were no desks in the room at all none and so she asked e the students why they should deserve to have desks and they I mean they came up with all kinds of answers and she didn't give them the answer and so the second period, third period, so on throughout the day. And at the last period, she had all of the students come into the classroom. And then there were 27 retired military uh, veterans that each one came in carrying a desk. And she said, this is why you have the ability to have a desk. Wow, that's beautiful. Yes. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> We do thank the Lord for his protection and for his direction. In fact, we want to continue to pray for his protection and direction over our country. Yeah. And we want to give him honor and ask that we would have the freedom that we've been enjoying to continue. But we want to pray for the freedom of every heart. Ernie, you were just talking about that. Where it comes down to each of us needs to make a choice. Yeah. And do we want to stubbornly cling to our old ways? Or do we want that fresh, new breath of life that you always talk about, calling that fresh drink of water that maybe we don't understand, but it's like, okay, God, I'm going to trust you yeah. and not myself any longer. And that's yeah. what we're praying for. Well, that's that's just what we were talking about. So, Colleen, would you... Actually, this morning, as I was uh, just kind of combing my hair, I thought, well, we'll just redeem this time. And so I thought, well, let's see, today's the 25th, so I'll listen to uh, Proverbs 25. And it was pointing out that the last five Proverbs were added um, after uh, Solomon had written um, a lot of the other ones. And what would, had happened, there had been a really bad king. And so the temple had been, you know, like in disrepair. People weren't praying. People weren't, you know, looking into the word of God, any of that kind of stuff. And they found the word of God in the temple. And so it was like, I mean, they were so excited. And I thought, wow, that's how I feel. I discovered in the book of Hezekiah that it was talking about how God was saying, wow, you've been so busy with your paneled houses and your entertainment and sports and all this stuff, but you've forgotten my temple. You've forgotten me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, wow, God. I mean, that's exactly <coughs> like what happened after 9-11. It was like God shook us during 9-11, and it looked like we were all woke up again and that we were all rushing back to church and mm -hmm. God, we're seeking you first and everything's, you know, back on track. And then I was so, I mean, we all just kind of went, oh, wow, let's just go back to normal, back to our little paneled houses and our entertainment and sports and all this stuff. And then the COVID um, thing, and it's like, I'm going, oh, Father, Father, we don't want to do that this time. We, we see that you have allowed President Trump to be a window of mercy. And he even stood up to say, no. Um, houses of worship, you know, Christians need to be able to gather together. They are essential. And I thought, Father, help us not to like fall back into yeah. like, 
you know, our paneled houses, entertainment, sport, sports, and so on. Yeah, so right, right now, just Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everything that you're doing right now. And especially, I just pray for the hearts, especially of believers out there, especially believers that have just fallen into the going to church and stuff. I, I pray um, really, Lord, with everything in me that uh, your spirit would just go across this country, especially, Lord, and, and just awaken the hearts afresh to you, Lord, to that it's about a relationship with you first and foremost. And then we're called to do all these other things. We're called to assemble. We're called to be together. But first and foremost... I just pray for every individual heart would fall deeply in love with you, Lord, that people would repent of their um, lukewarmness and they would be on fire for you, Lord, because time is at a hand. It, it's not This is not going to go on forever. And uh, we need to be awake. We need to make that choice to serve you and not fall back in with the world system. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And in fact, Father, as we think about that, you originally said that churches should be called houses of prayer. And so, Father, we know that before any revival ever, ever happens, there's more prayer and there's a real hunger and thirst after you, th that relationship and your word. And so, Father, we thank you that we just cry out, Abba, Daddy, mercy, mercy, mercy. Yes. Might you help us to have houses of prayer, and might we focus on you, and kind of like Mary did. I mean, she just hung on your every word, and that we would want to hang on your every word, because you wrote a love letter to us in the form of the Bible. Yes. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Father, I pray that mm -hmm. even as you're doing a new work right now, you, you've swept things clean, even though we're still battling this virus, with a word you could stop it. With a word, all the doctors and the hospitals could be amazed because all of a sudden this virus is gone. You could say that in a word. Lord, it says in, in your word in Luke 11 that you cast out the devil with the finger of God. With, it's not hard for you, but Lord, you're wanting to do a deeper thing in us. And there's also a passage where it says you don't put new wine into old wineskins. And so, Father, I pray that during this time you would help us to understand even what that means. And as you have swept things clean, how do you want us to proceed? Not go back to the same old, same old, but, Lord, give us revelation. How do we do this? How do we move forward? How do we become a house of prayer again? How do we become a house of worship again? Lord, let us see, let us understand, and I pray for the leaders of the churches. I pray for the pastors. I yes. pray for uh, the spiritual leaders that are um, you've put in charge, the, the wise ones, Lord, and, and the ones who are uh, fully resting at your feet and listening to your word. Help us to understand what you want us to do next, Lord. And I just thank you in advance for your answers in Jesus' yeah, name. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I just, I just, I just, as we've been praying over the last few minutes, uh, the Lord brought this remembrance to me. Um, I'm, um, all my kids now we ride out in Mojave Desert a lot, <clears throat> and we're planning this Thanksgiving to go out there again. It's one of my literally one of my favorite things in the entire. I don't know what it is about being out in the desert with my family and my friends riding dirt bikes out in the desert, but I remember multiple times. Sometimes it gets really hot. You know, we carry water with us, and uh, but you know when you're out in the desert and it's dry and it's and we go like during the winter time, so it's not terribly hot. But we have our hot days. But anyway, the point to this story is, I re vividly remember. Um, times where I'd be out there riding and uh, and I I have two canteens I carry on my pack and you know you just drink them because you're so thirsty you know and then you can't wait to get back to camp <laughs> so you can get to the water you know and then it's just I, I, but I remember that feeling of just not being able to get enough water and then when you're drinking it, it's like man this is so wonderful but you have that thirst you know and I want that with God's word, you know, in our hearts. You know? Well, as a matter of fact, Scott, it was so awesome when you said about the old wine skins that they would burst with the new wine in them. Yeah. But there was a there's a solution to that. They can take the old wine skin and if they will soak the old wine skin in water, soak it, soak it, soak it in the water, it'll soften it all back up again, and then the new wine can be poured in, but wow. you have to soak it, soak it in the water. So maybe between now and Pentecost, which is Sunday, how about beginning to just soak, soak, soak in the Word of God more yeah. and more and more of the Word, and we'll be ready when the Ruach 
uh, Hagodesh, the Holy Spirit, remember Jesus, he ascended back into heaven and he said, hey, I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to hang out in that upper room. And so it was like actually like 10 days and there were 120 of them. And for the longest time, I wondered how, I mean, 120, what, what's the 120? And then as I met Rabbi Daniel Vargas and began to hang out with some of the uh, Messianic Jewish people, it's that a prayer group is like 10 people. And so 10 people times 12 tribes. And I went, oh, there it is, oh, 120. Yeah. Oh, so, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I just challenge you and I challenge myself is that in these days before the 31st on Sunday, I'm going to just soak, soak, soak in the word of God so that my wine skin will be ready. Well, Amen. oh, so check this out. So a friend of mine who's one of the, he's the third owner of the shop up there in, in uh, Washington. He was all excited. He goes, oh, man, I've been looking for this thing I've got for you. I'm so excited. And, you know, he did, you know, God to him is just kind of a joke, you know, and everything. And, but it's okay. You know, people like that I really love. You know, Peter's an English guy and he's, in, he's into the metaphysical stuff. And I, you know, and I'm always saying, you know, you just need Jesus, man. And, and then I, you know, just I, I interject the seeds every chance I get. But anyway, he was so excited in my locker in the shop up there. He pulls out this big bag, and there's like a almost a 250 year old big fam. And I didn't recognize the translation. And the Bible's a little beat up, but he was so thrilled. He goes, you know, I was offered six thousand dollars for this Bible in its condition. He goes, but he goes, the, the money doesn't mean anything. He goes, I know you would really like this. And that just blew my mind. So even the people that we're, we're witnessing to, people are watching us. They're watching our witness. And they, they, they must see something that's, that's real and genuine. But isn't that... And I know he's kind of hurting for money. And, and he, I said, nah. He goes, yeah, I was offered like two years ago $6,000 for this Bible. And he goes, but something was telling me to keep it. And then, you know, cause, and then he thought about me because I've known Peter for years, you know. But isn't that, and he just gave it to me, and I have it, and I have any, so I'm going to open it, and and I need to find somebody, so if somebody's listening here in Newport, and they know somebody that can rebind and, and kind of restore, I would be very willing to, you know, so give, give us a call here at the station. But anyway, isn't that amazing, though? I know. It's and, <laughs> and see, really, that's exactly like that story that I listened to this morning, how like Hezekiah and, and the others, you know, they went into the temple that was really in disrepair. And while they were kind of rummaging around, digging out all the uh -huh. piled up stuff that had gotten piled up, they came across the word of God. And they were so excited because they began to read things yeah. in there that they'd forgotten all about. And I was listening to Pastor Luke on Sunday, and he was in uh, Judges 6. And so it was talking about uh, Gideon and the Gideon army. And that's one of my favorites, because yeah. when our grandsons used to come to the house, I'd play that game with them. I would give them a set of army figures that were one color, and I'd have a set another color. And I would tell them that they get to be Gideon's army. And then I'd get my Bible out and I used like the living translation so that yeah. it was real easy because they were little guys. And so I said, okay, now, are any of your little soldiers afraid? And it was like, yeah, you know, so they'd send some of those soldiers back home and I'd help them to know approximately how many needed to go home. And then it's like, OK, now, I mean, we're all thirsty, so we're going to go down to the river. And oh, and so, you know, how many of those little soldiers laid down on their tummy like a little puppy and, and lapped the water like that? Or how many just gently knelt down on their knee and lifted the water up and, and from like the cupped hand? And so all those that lap like a puppy send those guys home and right. so like now my army is like really big and their army is really little and so we would read the rest of that and I thought you know Pastor Luke that's exactly like what God does it's like he uses like the simple things yeah. to you know because he wants the he wants the glory and I thought okay um, here we are in the state of Oregon and I mean, we've got euthanasia, we've got 
abortion for anybody who wants it. And all of us taxpayers will just chuck out the money and pay for those free abortions. Um, We've got LGBTQ. We've just got, you know, we just continue to add more and more things. And it's like, I'm going, okay, Lord, how do you want us? Because then what ended up happening was that God told um, Gideon that he was to take down the old and put his altar on top of that. So it's like, let's tear down the old and put God on top where he belongs. Right. Well, I think that that's our uh, that's our mandate right now is to boldly proclaim the word and boldly love people, you know, and just keep speaking the truth in love and not being afraid, you know, all the political correctness. People still need to hear the truth. And the truth is the truth, whether you believe it or not. Well, and look at Peter um, on the day of Pentecost. I mean, hadn't all of the disciples been like hiding and quivering away? And so Jesus knew perfectly well that they'd never be able to make it. And he said, you got to hang out there. And then, I mean, everybody could see the tongues of fire. And it's like then Peter spoke. I mean, and he wasn't afraid and 3,000 people came to know Christ well, right then. If my memory serves me correctly, too. Didn't Peter get up on something? He stood up on, he said he stood up on something kind of like a platform, I think. If I, if, And he proclaimed to, and he wasn't afraid, you know? No. And so you know, I think. And the Holy Spirit did its job. Well, and here we are. I mean, isn't this incredible? It's like God has had us locked away, you know, yeah. just like Passover. Right. Um, and then the whole celebration of Easter, you know, where we, we look and we see, wow, Jesus, you really truly are the Lamb of God. Your yeah. blood is over our doorpost, over our entire life. Amen. And now yeah. he has us headed right toward Pentecost. And I think, I, you know, he's probably got something really super neat in store for us. You know, and I think we have to be ready. Mm-hmm. You know? Prepared. Soak, soak, soak in the yeah. word. And we have it. We have this. We have this wonderful advantage. Is we do have the Holy Spirit now. You know, we were just we're, we're teaching through Isaiah, and um, one of the one of the things uh, last time um, I was up to bat, it was uh, the same. The two words the Lord gave me was the same. And so, what's the same uh, from our Old Testament folks to where we're at today? And really, what, what is the same, which there's no difference because the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, but our human nature is the same. But the difference is, is why did the Jews and why, in, in my opinion, from my study of the word, is I believe the Old Testament saints, um, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had momentary, you know, I'm sure the Holy Spirit fell Like on a them, visitation. You know? Yeah, they had visitations, but they were left unto themselves. You know, of course, when you go through all the book of Kings, and at the end of almost every chapter, it said everybody did what was right in their own eyes. So I think that's one of the reasons, you know, we ridicule or maybe make fun of the Jewish nation, Israelites, for falling so many times. But um, that's us. they didn't have, yeah, you know, and we're no different. Well, we're different. So I believe our accountability as New Testament saints is going to be higher. Because what does the word also say? Well, what Much is given, much is required. Go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry. You're right, because I was thinking when I was reading up to Luke 11 and reading of the ministry of Jesus, it it dawned on me that Jesus hadn't been to the cross yet. And nope. what did he do when he started his ministry? He was healing, but he's also casting out a lot of demons. You know, And we don't really do that so much, but we do invite God to deliver us from whatever it is. Right. But I was just thinking about it. He hadn't been to the cross yet, and and you're right, uh, talking about the old the old saints and and we who are now two thousand years on the side of the cross, where His blood has been poured out and it's been sufficient, and all up into eternity they hadn't received that yet. It was no. something brand new, and so no wonder there were a lot of demons. You couldn't cast out a demon, you know, just by saying a spell or whatever. Right. It, it's the blood of the Lamb Jesus Christ that is effective, and right. we need to realize that and proclaim it. And He's had two thousand years now of His victorious work on the cross to be effective. And indeed, I think we're marching toward uh, toward the end. I don't know when it will be. Nobody does, but it's the effective blood of the Lamb, as you've already mentioned, Colleen. Right. But, but it's effective, and, and we need to proclaim it. 
and that's that's such a great practical application because a lot of times even in the gospels where you know jesus is plainly telling them what's going to happen especially as hey we're going to jerusalem i'm going to be arrested i'm going to be crucified i'm going to and they didn't get it they didn't understand because they didn't they weren't empowered with the holy spirit yet and what does the bible say that the natural man the things of god are, are almost foolishness to him and even though they were with jesus you know so it's a beautiful it's just such a beautiful picture of the power of the holy spirit indwelling our lives you know and they were with jesus and they still weren't getting it of course they they, they, they wrote it all down afterwards obviously because we have the full canon of scripture now but isn't that beautiful that that's such a beautiful point about the natural man does not perceive the things of god you know and, and now we have that advantage. We have the blood of the Lamb, and we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And God delights in uh, giving us what we need. And He says at this historical time to wait and pray. Yeah. You know, soak, soak in the newness. You know, just that old wineskin. Soak in my spirit, the Ruach Hakadesh. And man, what an exciting day! And so, right now, um, Lord, the natural man won't understand it, but we we've heard Colleen say that ninety percent of everything happens in prayer. And so we yeah. pray right now for a full visitation of your spirit, Lord, to come upon every man and every woman and every child, Lord, to knock at the door of their hearts so that they can open up and say, yeah. I don't get this, but I'm, I'm going to say yes to God Almighty, my yeah. creator. Lord, we can't do it. Only you can do it by your spirit. So we pray for every person. We pray for the governmental leaders, Lord, who seem to be contrary to your word. And we pray that there be an opening to the truth of your word and a releasing of the stubborn ways that we've had. And may your will be done and may your kingdom be here on earth just as it is in heaven, Lord. You're the king. We proclaim you as our Lord. The blood of the lamb is effective and the power of the Holy Spirit to cause us to do what you want us to do, Lord. You're the king. We're your people. In Jesus' name. Yeah. And in fact, Scott, as you were mentioning um, about that they um, cast out demons, and remember at one point um, the de- the disciples couldn't figure out how come they couldn't cast out the demon, and Jesus said some of those things won't happen without fasting and prayer. And so maybe perhaps God's kind of like pricking our our conscience or our awareness to realize wow, as the Lord maybe lays on our heart to fast and pray about something, we need to do that. And so I'm, I'm grateful that that example, that example is there for us. Amen to that. Mm-hmm. Isn't that beautiful? I just love how uh, I'm excited about the Pentecost. I, I had forgotten about that until you just reminded me because we were you know, talking about it before. So, you know, God's getting ready. And, and my prayer now is that, Lord, all of us... Um, that are walking with you, all all the believers that are in the sound of my voice, um, and all, even the ones that aren't listening, but uh, all of, all of us, Lord, that are on fire for you, we just pray, Lord, for your direction. Um, we wouldn't step ahead of you or behind you or to the left or to the right. Father, I pray more than anything, especially for myself, that we would be in the center of your will and we would have the ears to hear when you call us to speak or when you call us to proclaim uh, that the fear um, that the enemy would try to throw at us through those fiery darts um, would just bounce off, Lord, and, and we would have the boldness to lovingly speak your word, Lord, of correction if need be, of uh, encouragement, just, just whatever the situation is, Lord, pray that we would all be ready, Lord, for this time coming up. And thank you so much for this time. That What, a, what an amazing time in human history that we get to be alive and we get to be serving you. It's, uh, it's so wonderful, Lord. So we give you all the glory, and we're so excited to see what you are going to do Um, through us, Lord, in uh, Jesus' name. And in fact, Father, as we think about how you you use ordinary people, I mean, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, Ernie and Scott and I, we're kind of like a zero, (laughs) but with, but with, with Jesus standing right there beside us, filling us up, we're a 10. And so, Father, I just want to thank you and praise you that you use, and throughout the Bible, you show us over and over and over how you use ordinary people. And so, Father, I'm thanking you and praising you that whoever is hearing our voice today, they may be thinking, oh, yeah, well, you guys know the word. I mean, God couldn't use me. And I think, oh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, uh, look look at President Trump, really. 
I mean, in the Bible, he's very much like Cyrus, you know, and the thing is, it's like God uses somebody that wasn't like steeped in the word of God. He's not, you know, he's not a Billy Graham, you know, he's Donald Trump. And so, Father, I thank you for him yeah. standing in the gap. I thank you, Father, for him um, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I thank you for him declaring that our embassy needed to be in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. I thank you and praise you that we continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Yes. And, Father, we want that all of our Jewish brothers and sisters, because we're grafted in. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. Right. So, Father, we're praying for them and for their salvation, for their eyes to be open. Father, help us pay attention. Is there somebody around us that we could be praying for or could um, share the excitement of that relationship with you? Not just knowing a bunch of words about you, but to actually know you a lot like Mary and Mary and Martha. Mary could hardly wait for you, Jesus, to come to her house because then she'd get to hear exactly what you had to say. That's kind of how we want to be, too. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. 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 All right. Well, thank you guys for being in the studio and letting me be on the phone. Yeah. Why don't you give out your number, Scott, in case like you normally do? Yeah, that's right. Um, my phone number, if you'd like to text or contact, is 541 270 7855. You can also go to windsofpraise.com, and of course, everybody's on Facebook. And I've found that an easy way to catch this recording, as I'll process a little bit later on YouTube, is just type in my name, Scott Albright, YouTube, and I have a channel there, and we post all of these with a beautiful photo. Usually, Colleen will give me something that her son has taken, and maybe you can do that again today. And uh, I'll instruct you guys on how to. Uh, finish this recording on the air and then get it over to me because I'm I'm at home with my family um, as we're all called to be and to love our family and, and to minister there first and I thank you guys for letting me do that today. What a blessing you know God's a God is good so we had fun Scott yeah we always have fun <laughs> even when I'm in Washington and we're all it just it all works you know yeah well good and so, Father, just before we sign off on the air, we think of every single person who is hearing our voice. Yeah. And you said that you love to track them down and pour out one of your really special blessings. So I'm asking whatever blessing you have for each one, track them down. Yeah. I like to call them God shots because mm -hmm. so, they're Amen. such a great testimony. So, everybody, this is uh, Winds of Praise 98.7 KWPB LP Newport, Oregon. And uh, thank you so much. I will be on at noon today with my Great Adventure program live. So tune in for that, and uh, we'll go from there. So Lord bless you guys. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Colleen. And uh, we love you guys. And as always, go out there and give them heaven. Yes.